the Emergency Medicine Channel. As a part of EM Rapid 2024, I, Dr. Shreya Priyadarshini Roy, am going to present uh, Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome and Serotonin Syndrome. We'll begin with Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome. So, uh, Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome is a life-threatening neurologic emergency associated with the use of antipsychotic agents and characterized by a distinctive clinical syndrome of mental status change, rigidity, fever, and dysautonomia. NMS is rare but potentially fatal idiosyncratic complications of antipsychotic drug therapy and not the result of an overdose. It, is most often, it most often occurs shortly after the start of therapy or after a dosage adjustment and the antipsychotic serum concentration is usually within the therapeutic range. Uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome is associated with all the typical antipsychotics and most of the commonly available atypical antipsychotics including eripiprazole, clozapine, olanzapine, risperidone and ziprasidone. The risk factors. NMS is most often seen with high potency first generation antipsychotic agents formerly called the neuroleptic agents. Examples haloperidol, flufenazine. However, every class of antipsychotic drug has been implicated including the low potency example chlorpromazine and the second generation uh, antipsychotic drugs example clozapine, risperidone, olanzapine as well as anti-emetic drugs example metoclopramide, promethazine and levosulfide. NMS is also seen in patients treated for Parkinsonism in the setting of withdrawal of levodopa or dopamine agonist therapy as well as with dose reductions and a switch from one agent to another. Infection, dehydration and surgery are possible precipitants as well. This may be considered a distinct disorder from NMS and is sometimes called neuroleptic malignant like syndrome or Parkinsonism hyperpyrexia syndrome as well as acute echinacea or the malignant syndrome in Parkinson's disease. Now pathogenesis. Uh, the cause of NMS is unknown. Current theories are limited in their ability to explain all clinical manifestations and supporting of data because of the agent of the class of agents with which NMS is uh, related, uh, dopamine receptor blockade is central to most theories of its pathogenesis. Central dopamine receptor blockade in the hypothalamus uh, or may cause hyperthermia and other signs of this autonomia. Interference with nigrostriatal dopamine pathway may lead to Parkinsonism type symptoms such as rigidity and tremor. Other neurotransmitter systems, GABA, epinef uh, uh, epinephrine, serotonin and acetylcholine also appear to be involved either directly or indirectly. An alternative theory is that rigidity and muscle damage represent a primary effect of the peripheral muscle system perhaps from direct changes in muscle mitochondrial function. This in itself may represent a primary skeletal muscle defect or a direct toxic effect by these drugs on skeletal muscle. A primary role has also been proposed for a disruptive modulation of the sympathetic nervous system manifesting it increased muscle tone and metabolism and irregulated pseudomotor and vasomotor activity. These in turn lead to ineffective heat dissipation and labile blood pressure and heart rate. Dopamine antagonists precipitate symptoms by destabilizing normal dopamine regulation of inherent sympathetic activity. Now coming to the clinical features. We can divide it into the major features and the minor features. The major features include uh, fever more than 38 degrees Celsius that is 100.4 degree Fahrenheit measured orally at least on two occasions. Lead pipe muscle rigidity, psychomotor slowing and altered mental status. Sympathetic nervous system lability, that is, two or more features should be present. Either it should have an elevated blood pressure or there should be blood pressure fluctuation. Diaphoresis, urinary incontinence. Also, recent dopamine antagon uh, antagonist exposure or agonist withdrawal. Coming to the minor features, increased creatinine kinase level, that is, more than four times the upper limit of, myo uh, of the upper limit or myoglobinuria. Tachycardia, tachypnea, hypersalivation tremor and muscle cramps. The exclusionary criteria would be no other infection, toxic, metabolic or neurological cause should be identified. Now, neurological malignant syndrome usually develops over a period of one to three days and is characterized by the tetrad of altered mental status, muscular rigidity, fever and sympathetic nervous system lability. The rigidity is typically described as lead pipe and cogwheel rigidity similar to that observed with Parkinsonism. The majority of patients present first with altered mental status 
followed by rigidity, then fever, and lastly, sympathetic nervous system lability. Fever can be delayed for more than 24 hours after the first symptom. Other motor abnormalities include tremor and less commonly dystonia, opisthotonus, trismus, chorea, and other dyskinesias. Patients can also have prominent siloria, dysarthria, and dysphagia. Hyperthermia is a defining symptom according to many diagnostic criteria. Fever may be a less consistent symptom in patients with NMS associated with second generation antipsychotic agents. Autonomic instability typically takes the form of tachycardia, labile or high blood pressure and tachypnea. Dysrhythmias may occur, diaphoresis is often profuse. Now laboratory abnormalities. Common laboratory abnormalities include elevated creatinine kinase level. In neuroleptic malignant syndrome, CK, that is the creatinine kinase, is typically more than 1000 international units per liter and can be as high as 1 lakh international units per liter. Normal CK can be seen if rigidity is not clearly well developed, particularly early in the onset of the syndrome. CK levels greater than 1000 international units per liter, however, are, probab however, are probably more specific for NMS. Then other abnormalities that could be leukocytosis, elevated levels of hepatic transaminases, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, hyperkalemia, hypernatremia or hyponatremia, metabolic acidosis, myoglobinuria, elevated bun and creatinine levels, then decreased serum iron level. The differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis of neuroleptic malignant syndrome includes one, the serotonin syndrome that we'll be talking about after some time. Next, malignant hyperthermia. It's a rare genetic disorder usually distinguished from NMS by its clinical setting occurring with the use of potent halogenated inhalational anesthetic agents and succinylcholine. Also in people who are exposed to heat stress or vigorous exercise. Its clinical appearance with, uh, is similar with hyperthermia, muscle rigidity and dysautonomia and it is very much quite similar to NMS although it is more fulminant. Next, malignant catatonia. Malignant catatonia shares clinical features of hyperthermia and rigidity with NMS. However, in this syndrome, this there is usually a behavioral prodrome of some weeks that is characterized by psychosis, agitation and catatonic excitement. The motor symptoms are also characterized by more positive phenomena that is dystonia, posturing, waxy flexibility and stereotyped repetitive movements. Lab values are more typically normal in this scenario. Other disorders that could be confused with NMS. One is acute intoxication with certain recreational drugs, especially MDMA, can be confused with neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Others are meningitis, encephalitis, heat stroke, seizures, tetanus, thyrotoxicosis, pheochromocytoma, drug withdrawal states, acute dystonias, acute porphyrias. Then coming to treatment. First line treatment would always be withdrawal of any antipsychotic and potentiating drugs such as anticholinergics, antihistaminics or lithium. IV hydration to restore circulating volume and maintain urine output. If creatinine kinase is very high, high volume IV fluids with urine alkalinization may prevent or mitigate renal failure. Reduce the patient's temperature with external cooling measures. Acetaminophen does not help in these scenarios. Use blankets, ice water, gastric lavage, and ice packs in the axilla. Sedation with the benzodiazepine, benzodiazepine such as lorazepam, dosage 1 to 2 mg IV or IM every 4 to 6 hourly, or diazepam 10 mg IV every 8 hours as needed, uh, as needed if patient is very much agitated. Lower BP is significantly, lower the BP if it is significantly elevated. Clonidine can be used in this setting. Nitroprusside can be used, but it causes cutaneous vasodilatation, so can help in cooling also. Next, airway protection. You have to consider early intubation in this scenario, especially if hypersalivation is present. Airway and breathing difficulties should be anticipated and patients with excessive secretions, dysphagia, decreased airway reflexes, acidosis or hypoxia should be intubated. In addition, strongly consider intubating patients with fever and rigidity because neuromuscular paralysis reduces the muscle contraction and thereby reduces the fever. Non-depolarizing uh, neuromuscular blocking agents, that is rock uranium, should be used rather than depolarizing agents, that is succinylcholine. Consider agents to reduce severe muscle rigidity. 
coming to the specific treatment, dantrolene. That is a directly acting skeletal muscle relaxant. Dosage, 1 to 2.5 milligrams kg IV, that is the loading dose, followed by 1 milligram per kg every 6 hourly. Bromocryptin, which is a centrally acting dopamine agonist that can reduce fever and muscle rigidity in uroleptic malignant syndrome and possibly shorten the duration starting with 2.5 milligrams per oral 3 to 4 times a day. It usually causes hypotension, worsening of symptoms, uh, worsening of psychosis and vomiting. Or amantadine, 100 milligram per oral 3 times a day. Also, we can use electroconvulsive therapy. The rationale of the use for the use of ECT in NMS includes its efficacy in treating malignant catatonia and reports of Parkinsonism improving with ECT. Therefore, it is reserved for patients not responding to other treatments. Complications are uh, that could arise from profound muscle rigidity are responsible for the most of deaths in neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Prompt reduction in muscle rigidity can be expected to minimize the occurrence of complications such as rhabdomyolysis, renal failure, respiratory failure, disseminated intravascular coagulation and cardiovascular collapse. The role of specific ph pharmacotherapy is unclear. No treatment has been shown to be superior to supportive care alone. So basically, uh, in the treatment of uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, early intubation if required, uh, hydration, uh, and uh, if sedation is required, sedation, if patient is very much agitated, lowering the BP with clonidine, all supportive measures are very much more important because the role of specific pharmacothera pharmacotherapy that is uh, dantrolene, bromocryptine, uh, amactidine is yet not very clear. But supportive care is very much important. Next, coming to serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome is a potentially life-threatening condition associated with increased serotonergic activity in the central nervous system. It can be produced by any drug or more commonly by a combination of drugs that increases central serotonin neurotransmission. Antidepressants are the class of drug most commonly associated with serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome is characterized by a combination of alterations in cognition and behavior, autonomic nervous dysfunction and neuromuscular abnormalities clinical features, the serotonin syndrome usually occurs within 2 to 24 hours after the dosing of the serotonin agonist. Now, uh, what are the uh, clinical features? So we can divide them into cognitive, autonomic and neuromuscular and also major and minor. So major criteria include from cognitive, altered level of consciousness and agitation, autonomic, hyperthermia, diaphoresis. Neuromuscular, muscle rigidity, hyperreflexia, myoclonus, and tremor. Coming to the minor uh, features, cognitive minor features would be insomnia, restlessness, anxiety. Autonomic would be tachycardia, hypertension, or hypotension, tachypnea, mydriasis. Neuromuscular would be akathisia and incoordination. Now, this is a list of drugs, serotonergic drugs, which are more prone for causing uh, serotonergic serotonin syndrome. This includes the antidepressant drugs as well as other agents. Examples of antidepressant drugs could be phenelzin, isocarboxazid, rasagilin, selagilin, then selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like fluoxetine, sertraline, paroxetine, uh, citalopram, escitalopram, serotonin or norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors like venlafaxine, desvenlafaxine, levomil, uh, nasipran, then cyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline, clomipramine, nortriptyline, Atypical antidepressants like trazodone, which has a moderate potency, or bupropion, which has a low potency. Other agents could be amantadine, amphetamines, bromocryptin, carbamazepines, codeines, fentanyls, linozolid, misalazine, and such other drugs. Next, the importance of serotonin syndrome in emergency practice is twofold. Firstly, the diagnosis of serotonin syndrome is very challenging because of its non specific symptomatology. Mild cases of serotonin syndrome frequently are misinterpreted as other psychiatric and medical disorders and severe cases are often misdiagnosed as neuroleptic malignant syndrome because the two disorders share some features such as hypertension, tachycardia, tachypnea, fever, hypersalivation and diaphoresis. Without proper recognition of patients at risk for serotonin syndrome, one may inadvertently Precipitate seroton serotonin syndrome by administering serotonergic agents, example, meperidine, tramadol, dexmethorphan. 
to prevent iatrogenic precipitation of the serotonin syndrome and we use, need to use drug databases and other resources to evaluate the potential drug interactions. Now the clinical features. This also we can be uh, divided as per mild, moderate and severe. When do we categorize serotonin syndrome as mild serotonin syndrome, moderate or severe? Mild will com uh, compile of mild agitation, fever would be less than 40 degrees Celsius, there will be tremor, myoclonus, hyperreflexia, diaphoresis, mydriasis, elevated blood pressures and heart rate. Moderate, marked agitation, patient will be very much agitated with temperatures more than 40 degrees Celsius that is hyperthermia will be there, myoclonus could be there, hyperreflexia will be there, ocular clonus and increased bowel sounds. Severe. Hyperthermia more than 41.1 degrees Celsius, delirium, marked muscle rigidity, marked swings in blood pressure and heart rate. Myoclonus is a common finding in serotonin syndrome and is an important distinguishing feature because myoclonus is rarely seen in other conditions that mimic serotonin syndrome. Muscle rigidity is especially prominent in the lower extremities. Seizures are usually generalized and short-lived. Hyperthermia is of moderate severity. Hypertension is twice as common as hypotension in associated with a more favorable prognosis. There is no confirmatory lab diagnosis. It is based entirely on clinical assessment and exclusion of other conditions. Published diagnostic criteria emphasize on exposure to an unknown serotonergic drug and the presence of myoclonus or at least one of the two of the other common features. Treatment. First treatment would always be stop all serotonergic therapy. Initiate cardiopulmonary monitoring, establish peripheral IV axis and obtain an ECG. We have to give IV fluid rehydration and evaluate for rhabdomyolysis. Exertional cooling measures for hyperthermia, external cooling measures sorry, benzodiazepines for agitation, using short acting IV antihypertensives like nitroprosides or esmolols for severe hypertension and using direct, IV, direct acting IV vasopressors, norepinephrine, epinephrine or phenylephrine for hypotension resistant to IV fluid resuscitation. Cy uh, cyproheptadine has been suggested in the past but clinical evidence of its benefit is lacking. The stimulation of specific postsynaptic serotonin receptors is required for full expression of the syndrome, primarily the serotonin 5-HT1A and 5-HT2A receptors but other receptor subtypes may contribute. Drugs that block postsynaptic serotonin receptors are incapable of inducing the syndrome and are often used as a form of treatment. Benzodiazepines are non-specific serotonin antagonists and can be used to decrease patient discomfort and promote muscle relaxation. Patients with severe serotonin syndrome should be sedated, undergo neuromuscular blockade with a non-depolarizing agent, be intubated and started on mechanical ventilation. Chlorpromazine is an antagonist of 5-HT2A receptor and there are reports of successful treatment of serotonin syndrome. Tantrolin is a non-specific muscle relaxant that is occasionally used in the treatment of serotonin syndrome but clinical benefit otherwise is unknown. Chlorpromazine is an antagonist of 5-HT2A receptor and there are reports of successful treatment. Now this is just a comparison chart between syndrome, serotonin syndrome, malignant uh, neuroleptic syndrome and anticholinergic toxicity. The precipitating event could be for serotonin syndrome, addition of a serotonergic drug. The onset is usually within 24 hours and the distinguishing features are myoclonus, tremors, hyperreflexia. While coming to neuroleptic malignant syndrome, the precipitating, precipitating event would be addition of dopamine antagonist with withdrawal from dopamine agonist. The onset usually within days to weeks. Distinguishing features are bradyreflexia, sluggish reflex response and bradykinesia, motor slowing or psychomotor retardation. Then the rigidity would be lid pipe rigidity. Then anticholinergic toxicity, just for comparison, precipitating event would be addition of an anticholinergic drug. The onset would be usually within one to two hours and the distinguishing features will be dry skin and mucous membranes and uh, normal muscle tone and reflexes. So uh, that's all. We sum up with neuroleptic malignant syndrome and serotonin syndrome and I hope you got to learn something through this video. Thank you.